So I'm here with uh, Sarah Hurwitz today, the author of Here All Along, the book that Beth Emmett has been reading all year in our One Book, One Congregation event. We started off last fall with a kickoff on Simcha Torah, her first chapter being on Torah. So we thought that'd be a wonderful time for us to get together and the wonderful communal dinner and conversation. And all year long, we've been reading it in book groups. I've been speaking on the book on Friday nights. And now, we get to meet Sarah Hurwitz next week. So I'm really delighted to introduce her to, introduce her to you all today. Uh, this is Sarah Hurwitz, the author, and we spent a little time talking about what she's going to talk about next week and to get excited for Monday night. Remember, Monday night, May 15th, we're going to be at Beth Emmett at uh, 7 p.m. We're going to have some goodies, and then we're going to have a chance to talk to uh, Sarah. And then afterwards, bring your books, and she'll sign them from you as well. So Sarah, it's delightful to be with you here today. Just a couple oh. of questions to get people excited about your book. What brought you to writing this book and what were you hoping that people would get out of it? Yeah, you know, as someone who rediscovered Judaism in my mid thirties, I just thought like, where has this been all my life? You know, I really didn't see the true depth and power and transformative offerings of Judaism in my kind of half-hearted contacts with it, which were, you know, a couple times a year in a synagogue, a Seder, that's that's not all of Judaism, right? You can It's easy to think that these three holidays, that's the Judaism. And of course, that's not true, right? We have extraordinary spiritual wisdom, ethical wisdom. We have so many different life cycle rituals, holiday celebrations. We have history, literature, music, food. You know, Judaism is, as Rabbi Mordecai Kaplan, a great American rabbi said, it's a civilization, right? And I discovered this profound civilization that really transformed my own life. And I just thought, I want to share this with other Jews and with people of any background who are just curious about the wisdom of this you know, 4,000 year tradition that contains millions of years of crowdsourced insight on what it means to be human. Crowdsourced insight. What does that mean? That's a wonderful expression. Yeah. So, you know, people talk about crowdsourcing, right? Where it's sort of the wisdom of crowds. I don't really buy that, but I do think there is power when you look into 3,000 years, people over 3,000 years, many, many Jews over 3,000 years, constantly interpreting their core sacred texts and reinterpreting and reinterpreting and reinterpreting. We have this accumulated body of wisdom over many, many centuries about how to live a good life, how to be a good person. And I think there's real, real heft to that in a way that, you know, I sometimes see people today who follow this one guru or this one self-help author, and that's great, right? Read, read the self-help authors, check out the gurus. I mean, you know, there's wisdom everywhere, but you know, when you compare that to thousands of years of wisdom from millions of your ancestors, I don't know, maybe give, maybe give it a chance. Just putting it out there, you know, no bad ideas, right? We're just brainstorming. That's just what I think, I think it's worth diving into. In the writing of this book, what most surprised you and what most delighted you in your research? Oh, and so many things. Um, you know, I think what most surprised me was the complexity and sophistication and diversity of Jewish thinking around God and spirituality. And I think growing up, I just assumed that the God in the sitter, the prayer book, was just this man in the sky who controlled everything. And I thought that was absurd. I will never believe that. I have never believed that. I think anyone who's aware of events like the Holocaust, that's a very tough theology. But when I actually started digging into Jewish tradition, I realized, wait, wait a second, that's not what Jewish tradition thinks either, right? We don't have some simplistic childish dogma of God that you must either accept or reject. Instead, we have centuries worth of commentary of people really wrestling with this concept of the divine. People who say that God is not actually all powerful. Well, that was a revelation to me, like, wait a second, okay. That's actually interesting. So maybe God actually doesn't control everything. Well, that's an interesting idea of the divine. Like, I didn't think about that. A lot of people who say God is not some discrete being. And I'm like, oh, the idea that God is everything. You're God, I'm God. This sort of mystical Jewish conception that we are all connected. We are all part of God. There are ideas that we enact God, that by acting in godly ways, we actually bring God into the world. I mean, these are very different, much more sophisticated and much more to me palatable ideas of talking about the divine than some man in the sky. And so I think that to me, it was both surprising and just really delightful. I thought this is a very smart tradition, one that doesn't ask me to take things on faith. You know, you're never gonna, you're never gonna hear, you know, in Judaism, it's not gonna say take this on faith, nor are people really gonna 
ask you, how's your faith? What do you, what do you, how do you believe? What do you believe? It's like, it's not really the core question, right? I think it's a deeper core question of how are you living? By whom or what are you commanded to live a Jewish life as you deem fit? Right? These are different questions. And so I was really delighted and surprised to find this tradition that asked what I thought were really smart and interesting questions and did not provide easy answers. How did you start on this journey and what kind of advice would you give to people who are beginning to open the door more on their Judaism, but are a little bit unfamiliar or still scared or don't know um, how to get started in a way that would be productive and growthful? Yeah. First of all, I feel you. I mean, I think I spent most of my life feeling so intimidated every time I walked walked, or I should say half-heartedly shuffled into a synagogue, which was like once or twice a year, I felt embarrassed. I didn't know the prayers. I didn't know what was going on. I felt like an imposter. And I will be honest, I still feel that way sometimes today. I still feel like I don't know enough. Everyone else knows more. I didn't grow up with everything that we're doing here. Oh no, they're going to know. But you know, it turns out that lots of Jews feel this way. And I don't know where that magical non-imposter Jew is. <laughs> we all feel like we don't <laughs> know enough. And you never know enough in Judaism. That's the whole point. It's this deep tradition where you could always learn more. No one knows all the Jewish things. And if, you know, for me, I just came to it really randomly by, by some weird set of circumstances, taking an intro to Judaism class, which it was just, it was completely random. I'd broken up with someone. I was very lonely. I needed something to do. I heard about the class. I thought, this is probably going to be stupid, but whatever. Might as well learn about my, my tradition. And I was just blown away, not so much by the class, but by the text that we were reading. You're know, reading these Jewish ethical texts. I just thought, wow, this is, this is a very deep, deep way of thinking about how to be a good person. But I think the secular world, secular ethics are like, do whatever you want, as long as you don't hurt other people too much. It's not like a, the highest bar, whereas suddenly I'm reading these ancient Jewish texts and it's articulating a much higher ethical bar than what I'd ever thought to articulate myself for myself. And I thought like, wait a second, this is really deep. So I, you know, what I would really advise is like take an intro class, you know, so many local synagogues, JCCs, federations, like there are so many of these intro classes available. Some of them are even online. So if you, if it's hard to kind of show up somewhere, you can just take it from your house. And I also, there are just some really good introductory books that you can just read on your own time at your own pace. My book is actually designed to be that kind of introduction. You know, it's interesting. I always, I thought it was for just disengaged Jews but, and a lot of disengaged Jews said, you know, I knew nothing about Judaism. And I read your book and it helped me come in. And then I've also had like very, very religious, like Orthodox Jews, Chabad rabbis say, no, this book was really for me. It's like, I did not intend that, but <laughs> they see that there is, there's some deeper insights as well. So wherever you are on your journey, there are books you can read, there are classes you can take. I think that's a good, a good place to start. And then you can decide, okay, here's what most inspires me. Once you have the basics, you have a sense of what's out there, then you can say, okay, I'm really excited about Shabbat. I want to try celebrating that. Or gosh, I love reading about Jewish history. Great. Dive more deeply into that. There's so many different ways to connect as a Jew. And I think you can find, you can really pursue any of these paths and have a very deep and meaningful experience. You know, it's interesting you say that because uh, when I, I, I picked your book uh, to read as a congregation, people said, well, well, who's the book for? It's uh, talking about Judaism as an intro level in some ways. And I said, well, number one, I think that what I like about the book is that although it's accessible, it's also deep. And it's difficult to write a book that does both of those things. Sometimes accessible books are just very superficial and you can't go very deep. But your book really um, opens uh, windows and doors for people at all different levels. And the other thing I liked about it was it could be a jumping off point for further conversation with people, that people could get together. People who were more sophisticated in their learning, who knew less, could all read the book and have a level playing field from which to engage. And it's certainly something I've found this year when I hear about the discussion groups that have happened, that people uh, who have been Jewish their whole lives and have been learning their whole lives and people who have come in either because they've converted to Judaism or just um, as you did, you know, didn't really engage with it so much, uh, even though they were born Jewish, I have found, a, have found a, a door into their Judaism and to community. So we are really, really excited about talking with you more on, on Monday night, Monday, May 15th, 7 p.m. We're going to see Sarah Hurwitz at Beth Emmett be there. If you can't be there in person, we'll also be live streaming. Thank you so much, Sarah. Have safe travels, and we're looking forward to seeing you on Monday.
Thank you. I am so looking forward to this. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun.